chocolate in them, so we you just pass them up. <laughs> All right, 8 and verse 1. 8 and verse 1. <coughs> food offered to idols. We talked about the marriage seminar, Paul's marriage seminar last week. Uh, and the, well, I think about how many weeks? Four weeks? And that was heavily downloaded. Uh, uh, Paul's marriage seminar that he, he gave. We got one right from the original language. And uh, see what Paul had to say about marriage. And we discovered some very interesting things. And here we're going to study about uh, food. 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 Perry? Day? Tone? Idella? The tone? Oidamen? Hote? Pontes? Nosen? By the way, you see that Nosen starts with a gamma, doesn't it? In English, uh, this word, we have a word that comes right in the English from there. And that's, that's the word right there, no. Now, do you pronounce the, the K? No. Well, you swallow the no on, in Greek also. It's nose. It's not gnose. That's the way I was taught gnose. But it's nose. Nose. You just swallow the gamma. That's what you call swallowing. In different languages, they do that. In different languages, you swallow. And uh, let's look at it this way. Where's another word? <coughs> How do you say that word? Huh? Sword. Sword. It's not sword. You say sword. Sword. All right. And there you swallow the W. All right. So it's no say, no sin that is. Echoman, hey, gnosis, fee, coi, hey, day. Agape, oi, ko, da, moi. Oi, ko, da, moi. Oi, ko, da, moi. Da, me, that is. Oi, ko, da, me. Little old preposition in the front there, peri. But it starts out with the day, a weak adverse to conjunctive particle. And if you want to write down page 85 down below, that you can. I didn't write all of these down so you guys would write them down. If I write it all down, then you don't get to do that. When your fingers write something, your mind remembers it. Is that what you tell your teachers? I mean, your students, Rebecca? It write it. I told them that today. You told them that today? <laughs> all right. If you write something down, uh, spelling words, do they have spelling? All right. You have to write your spelling words ten times and turn them in and things like that. The reason why you do that is when you write it, your brain remembers it. It photographs it in your mind. Okay? So that's why I'm letting you do some of this. Idol worship. All right. Idol worship. Idolatrous. Idolatry. That's what idol the word idolatry comes from right there. Idol sacrifices. It comes from idola. Idola or idolos, and then uh, uh, thetone on the back of it there, that means to sacrifice to idols, to sacrifice to idols, to sacrifice to idols. Concerning the idol sacrifices, we have known, look at that word oidamen, oidamen. That comes from oida, and it says we have known, it's first person plural, perfect tense. Perfect tense. It's already happened. It's completed tense. First person plural, perfect, indicative, active. What's the indicative mode? I don't want to beat you to death with grammar too much tonight, but what's the indicative mode? What does that mean? That's a statement of fact. A statement of fact. If you say something is indicative, it means that it is true. True. All right. And the active voice, uh, of course, uh, that means the person is acting. All right. Hote, that is a conjunction or a casual particle. Pontes, all knowledge, all knowledge, uh, all knowledge we have, all knowledge. Gabby, did you bring your Bible tonight? Did you bring that there? Uh, <coughs> they haven't got to see you for a long, long time. They keep asking <laughs> if you don't mind coming up and reading in a minute. Uh, all knowledge we have. 
We have first person plural, present indicative active. First person plural is we, okay? First person singular is what? I. I, you, he, a she, or an it, okay? That's singular, and then plural is, first person plural is we, ye, and they. That's something you really need to remember. A lot of people think they know English, but they don't know what person you're talking about. Unless you understand a foreign language, you will never really understand English. You will never understand English until you study a foreign language. Now, German, Brother uh, 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 Roger, you can speak German, can't you? No. Some? Some? No. Just a little bit? Just a little bit? Uh, but it's inflected, isn't it? It's an inflected language. Uh, Rebecca, Russian is inflected. Matter of fact, Russian comes just about straight out of Greek. It's inflected. It tells you every word tells you in Spanish, uh, Anna, Spanish is inflected. And you know exactly what, if it's a masculine or feminine talking, okay? Masculine and feminine. We have known that all knowledge we have, first person plural, present indicative active, we have it all the time. It's not something you get and go, but it's, you have it all the time. They told me with all this poisoning and everything else that I should be a blithering idiot. My mind should have been gone by now. <laughs> I've got an, I had enough mercury and arsenic in me to kill almost five people. Five Mercury, almost five people, and arsenic, almost five. But I'm down to 1.8 in arsenic now. <laughs> so it's just barely more than enough to kill, well, a little less than two people. But you lose your marbles right here. I think the reason why I have my marbles is the Lord, period. <laughs> That's all. Knowledge. Gnosis. Gnosis, knowledge. All knowledge we have continually. And then it says puffed up. Look at that word puff up. That means a bellows. How many of you have ever seen a, uh, a blacksmith shop or, or own some of these old, uh, I've seen, I've, I used to run bellows and and do blacksmith work. As a matter of fact, if you come out there to the farm, you'll see the things that are up, hanging up here and there that, that either I made or somebody else made from a forge. They took it out of raw steel and beat it out to where it looks like something. I took a, a horseshoe here a while back, about 10 years ago, and I put it in a forge, and I took a railroad spike. Do you know what a railroad spike is? Things they hold down the railroad. I took that and I and I had some borax. Borax is good flux. That's what they used to use for flux. And I put that horseshoe and that uh, uh, railroad spike in the forge and got them just almost white hot. Took them out and dipped them in in borax and started beating them together and pounded it together to where it became one. It was forged into one. Forged into one. Now this word here, uh, fisoi, fisoi, that means a bellows. And what you do is you have a uh, either a rock or cement or a steel forge of some sort. A lot of forges have a, a fire brick in the bottom of it. And they have to have air going in there. You can start a fire, but even if you're starting a fire out in the woods, a little picnic fire, whatever you're going to do, sometimes you have to blow on it, don't you? And you can buy a little bellows that blow. Well, they used to have those bellows like that, and that's what it's talking about here. Today, they have electric bellows. My forges had electric bellows on them, and the old ones, I used to stand there and crank them with a, with a crank while the blacksmith did his job. <coughs> to puff up. But the love, agape. Look at that word, agape. Now, we're going to look at some words for love here in just the next verse. Agape means sacrificial love. That means when you love someone so much that you will give their life, you'll jump out in front, and you will save them and sacrifice yourself. That's what kind of love this is. This is the kind of love that uh, Jesus had for us, this kind of love. 
it builds up oikodomeo. Dome is we got our word in English dome. You know what a dome is? We never, one time here in in Bakersfield, California, you couldn't find a mosque any place. <laughs> and now you all already got these domed mosques all over the place. They're all domed up. The do word dome it means to build up. Oikos is house, and it means house to build up. And what it's talking about here is to build up the house of God. To build up the house of God. Gabby, you want to come up here and read this and and the Amplified Bible. For me, please. <clears throat> yeah, one. Okay. Now about food offered to idols. Of course we know that all of us possess knowledge concerning these matters, yet mere knowledge causes people to be puffed up, to bear themselves loftily and be proud. But love, affection, and goodwill, and benevolence edifies and builds up and encourages one to grow to his full stature. Now, can you just read that one more time and li li listen very closely because some of you don't have an Amplified Bible, okay? Listen to what it says. Now about food offered to idols. Of course we know that all of us possess knowledge concerning these matters, yet mere knowledge causes people to be puffed up, to bear themselves loftily and be proud. But love, affection, and goodwill, and benevolence edifies and builds up and encourages one to grow to his full stature. Thank you. True love. True love. True love. Now, there's different words for love. Let's just look at some of them for a minute. We got agape over here. Agape. <coughs> I'm going to write them up here so you can see them. Agapeo. All right. Agapeo. That's number one. We know that's sacrificial love. John 3.16. For God, what? So loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Who would believe in him should not perish but have eternal life. Now, there's another place that I read a book one time to try to tear down the word agapeo and make it just like any other Greek word. This guy wrote a, uh, of course, he wasn't a Greek scholar either. He was just some kind of a guy and he'd do well, you know, that wrote, wrote a book and everything. He said the word agape does not mean sacrificial love. Because he look over here, he said the Pharisees have said they loved the honor of men more than God. They loved what did they do? They sacrificed their eternal souls. They sacrificed their eternal souls for the love of men, for the, the, the pride and the honor that they had. They sacrificed their eternal soul. So did they sacrificially love that honor and love that puffed up pride? Sure they did. They gave their eternal souls, not only their lives, but their eternal souls for it. Their eternal souls. Okay? Now here's another word. Now, a lot of people will disagree me on, with me on this thing, but let's look at this one. Poneria. Poneria, Liddell and Scott. By the way, Agapeo, page two in that analytical Greek lexicon, that's what page is on, okay? Page two, because it's an alpha, you know. It starts with an alpha and A. Poneria, page uh, 1447 in Liddell and Scott, page 1447. It means an, a strong attraction. It means a lust. It is uh, used for the greed of money. It is used for prostitution. It's used for homosexuality. It's used for every evil desire. Now, do people love Playboy magazine? Whatever they, they've got out there. Do they love this? Do they love that? How much do they love this unusual thing? A man and a woman, God made man and woman where they would be attracted to each other. Okay, that's, we know that, don't we? I mean, we know that. Man and woman are attracted to each other. And that's normal, that's God given, that is, that is imprinted in your DNA, zip. Okay, it's there. That's what attracts you to each other, okay? 
but to use, for instance, if you're a woman, to use that attraction, if you're attractive and everything else, to make money with it like a prostitute. That's twisted in it. That's bad. And it's what we call a form of pornography. Okay? These dancers, wherever they are in, in different places, I think they've got some of them here in Bakersfield and all over the place, that is pornography. There's all kinds of pornography that they sell in bookstores and things. Is that attractive to these people? How hard is it for somebody to lay that down? Hmm? Very difficult. Because there is a great love for it, a love, an attraction. Almost a sacrificial, because some of them, before they lay it down, they'd rather go to hell. Wouldn't they? All right. Bonaria, Matthew 7, 22, uh, and 7 and 11 talks about it. It is a love, Bonaria is a love for violence. Violence. A love for violence. This is twisted stuff very twisted love you have to be careful even as a child of God you go to the hockey game and you want to see somebody get beat up and bloodshed <laughs> and the same thing at a football game or whatever what is it this violence let's go back into the Roman culture back to the Roman Colosseum uh, they would have a stage in the Colosseum and even when they were doing plays, you know what I'm talking about, don't you there, Gabby? They did plays. And in the Roman times, when they did plays, if somebody was going to get killed, if somebody was going to get killed, you know what they did? They killed them. They weren't play acting. They were gasping and they were bleeding and they were dying right on stage. They would take a condemned criminal and they'd say, oh, will you get out here and do this? And then they'd stab them in the heart, cut the throat or... Whatever they did to them, that's what, whatever was in the script, that's what they did to them. Killed them. And they got to see all the gory details. Right there on the stage, well lighted. And what were the gladiator games about? Killing and maiming and murdering. And that was a sport. That was sport. It was. <coughs> Poneria. Okay. Storge, storge. Storge or Storgeo. Storgeo is on page uh, uh, by the way, the other one that word Poneria is on page 336 in the analytical Greek lexicon. Now Storge uh, Romans 131, Romans 131, uh, Romans 131. Uh, Rebecca, you want to, can you, are you there pretty much? You want to come up here and read that one for me, Romans 131. Let's look at that. <coughs> and that was on page 57 in the analytical. <coughs> one thirty one. Yes. They were without understanding, conscienceless and faithless, heartless and loveless and merciless. All right. That's, we're talking about people that have denied the faith. Come, hold on just a minute. <laughs> Go back up one, one verse up there above that now. About no, 29. 29. Until they were filled, permeated, and saturated with every kind of unrighteousness, iniquity, grasping, and covetous, covetous greed, and malice. They were full of envy and jealousy, murder, strife, deceit, and treachery, ill will and cruel ways. They were secret backbiters and gossipers, slanderers, hateful to and hating God, full of insolence, arrogance, and boasting, inventors of new forms of evil, disobedient and undutiful to parents. They were without understanding, conscienceless and faithless, heartless and loveless and merciless. Boy. That's describing reprobates. Reprobates, ones that have denied the faith. What it's talking about, that's the chapter there in the book of Romans that talks about homosexuality and all of the vices. Bonaria is a love of vice, the love of vice. The love of vice. 
Now, storge is the word there in Romans 1 and 31 there where it says without normal family love. There was, a, there was a Roman emperor one time by the name of Nero. He killed everybody in his family. He even killed his wife, and she was pregnant with his child. Killed his children. Kill, 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 kill. Herod killed his family. So you'd have to call Herod the Great and even Herod Jr., just about all those Herods, you'd have to call them without storge. This is family love. This is affection for your family. This is, this is uh, your blood kin, Brother Bill. You love them. You naturally love your kin. You no, love your family. You love your family. I, uh, well, I think about six years ago, I got acquainted with my cousins back in Paul's Valley, Oklahoma, the one that wrote the book, Shadow of an in Indian Star. And he called, we talked on the phone quite a few times, he said, I just can't wait till I see you. And we sat under the same table together. You're my family. He said, you're my family. And we did that quite a few times. He was here in the Sunday school class. They led in singing and all kinds of things. Uh, that's family. That's family love. You love your family. You love your children. But some people don't love their children. Did you know that? We got a whole society out there that don't have any love for their children. And the children don't have any love for their parents. They're nomads, so to speak. Without love, and it would be astorge. That's astorge. That's negative on the front of that, okay? And then we have another word, eros. These are all words for love now. Eros. Eros. What word in English do you think that we have from this word? Erotic. What is that? Erotic. Erotic. All right, erotic. Uh, something that uh, incites your uh, lust, okay? Now, this word is not used in the New Testament, but on page 691 in Liddell and Scott, it tells you all about it. Eros was the god of making up. The god of making up. Now, a man and a woman have a... It's an ionic word, by the way, from Ionia. Ionic. When you hear a word, it's a Hellenic word. It, it, that's word from... from uh, from, it, it means it's a Greek word of Greek origin. Uh, Attic, it's from Athens. Ionic from Ionia, okay? These are, the, these are what we call the Greek dialects that go way back as far in history as we can, well, we don't even know how far back they go, okay? Well, Eros was the uh, god of, uh, of love, physical love, physical attraction. And sometimes a man and a woman would get out of sorts with each other and they would fall out of love. They wouldn't, they didn't like each other anymore. Well, the man or the woman would go down and get an idol, a little idol, and they would start praying to this little idol, this god Eros, to build the fire back in their marriage and in their, in their love and their attraction for each other. And that's what that word Eros means, okay? So we looked at agapeo, ponaria, uh, storge, and Eros. That's what those words mean. 8 and verse 2 now. 8 and verse 2. A. Tis. Doke. Egno. Kene. T. Upo. Egno. Kathos. De. None. All right. The word there, I translated it if. But this really isn't if. How should that really be translated? You know? Brother Verdani? Since. All right. This is a uh, first class conditional particle, and that is the condition determined as fulfilled. So it's since. Since anyone he thinks. All right. Since anyone he thinks. And what rules that little thing there? 
uh, is third person singular present indicative active. See that indicative mode there? That's what tells you that's a first class condition. If that was a subjunctive mode, it would be a third class conditional particle. All right? If anyone he thinks to have known, look at that word, to have known, present or perfect indic infinitive active, infinitive is to, to have known anything, yet, not yet he knew, not yet he has known, just as it is bindingly necessary to know. Look at that word day there, that's third person singular, present, impersonal and active. Comes from the word to bind. And uh, in Matthew 28, 18 through 20, the Lord told his little church, it is bindingly necessary for you to make disciples. Bindingly necessary. Paul said, it is bindingly necessary for us to pray for one another. Bindingly necessary. Okay? And right here it says, just as is bindingly necessary to know. Bindingly necessary necessary to know bindingly necessary to know let's uh Dr. Jim, yes the first uh, line there that to have known is that epsilon at the beginning of the word a yeah does that does that give that a, yeah it's an epsilon the past tense what, what are you talking about now the, the um ignokine. oh it changes. The fact that it starts with an epsilon? Yeah. That's one of the things that changes over into a different tense. I don't, I haven't gone into all of that by any means. <laughs> but uh, that's one of the things. It, it, it has what we call a, uh, uh, a prefix that is uh, there that tells you it's in a different tense. And sometimes it'll even change the roots of the word to tell you what tense it's in. This one here is perfect infinitive active. Agnose, and of course we know it's gnosko is where it comes from. Gnosko, all right? Or nosko. If anyone he uh, thinks to have known anything, not yet. Look at that word there, upo, upo. That comes from uk and pos. Not yet. Not yet. He knew. All right, third person singular, second aorist, and dignity active. What's the difference between first aorist and second aorist? Remember? First and second aorist. First aorist is very knife sharp punctiliar, like this. And second aorist is just like a, a little bit longer sine wave, so to speak, in time. Tense in Greek means, it, the word for tense in Greek is chronos. We got to work chronology from that or time. It has the, it tells you of the time that it took to uh, make up this action. Punctiliar, first error, is, is very sharp. It happened. You are saved by grace. Boy, I mean, you don't get saved three or four times. You get saved one time, and it's going to be first error. All right? And when you get to know the Lord... It takes a little bit longer. That's when you've become, you become start knowing the Lord. Okay? And right here it says um, to know. Just as it is to know. Uh, Gabby, you want to come back up here again and read that verse number two for me, please? <clears throat> If anyone imagines that he has come to know and understand much of divine things without love, he does not yet perceive and recognize and understand as strongly and clearly, nor has he become as intimately acquainted with anything as he ought or as is necessary. All right. Thank you. Love. When you get to know God, when you when you when God God loves you, okay, if you're saved. You know what he doesn't love sinners, did you know that? 
Does it, just think about that for just a little while, what I just said. God doesn't lost the lo love the lost. He died for them, but he doesn't love them until they come to the knowledge of the Lord. And when they come to the knowledge, when they repent and call upon the Lord for forgiveness, then they make that love for them eff efficacious. In other words, it goes into effect. And when they love the Lord and the Lord loves them, they love the Lord. And not only do they love the Lord, but they love saved people. They love other saved people. They become part of the family of God. And that's the word storge that we talked about tonight, earlier, storge. Love. Now, love is more important than knowledge. Love is more important than knowledge, and that's what the Paul the Apostle is telling us. Love is a lot more important than knowledge. A lot of these people uh, uh, said, well, I'm very, very smart. I'm very smart. I'm very smart. I know, I know, I know. I know that I can go out and buy a, a sacrificed piece of meat that was sacrificed to an idol, and an idol is nothing. So it doesn't bother me because I know because that there's no such thing as a God, only the true God of heaven. Galatians 2, 1 through 10, and 1 Thessalonians 5 and 11. Cross reference to this. <coughs> Galatians 2, 1 through 10. Now, who wrote the book of Galatians? The Apostle Paul. Who did he write it to? The churches of Galatia. And here we have a, a letter that the Apostle Paul wrote to the church at Corinth that had lots of problems. And we're very thankful they had a lot of problems because we got more than they did. We wouldn't have all this information if, if it wasn't for this Corinthian church. I want to <coughs> go over here to Galatians real quick. Go to Galatians. Galatians 2. <coughs> Galatians 2. I'll read that quickly. Then after an interval of 14 years, I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas and taking Titus along with us. And it was because of a revelation that I went up and I submitted to them the gospel, which I preached among the Gentiles, but I did so in private to those who were of reputation for fear that I might be running or had run in vain. But not even Titus, who was with me, though he was a Greek, was compelled to be circumcised. Look at that. We had a lot of Jews. What was the biggest problem that, that Paul had? First of all, he had killed people that were church members, and the, the Jews didn't trust him too much. And then the Jews, the first church was a Jewish church, the first church church was all basically all Jewish that's the, all the disciples that Jesus had called out okay and they were very what we call uh, cliquish or prejudiced the most prejudiced people in the world are Jewish people to this day to this very day because they believe that they're called of God to do what they are doing the uh, in my uh, Genesis class on Sunday afternoon we're just about to get into something there is a universal law of God that is the rejection of the firstborn we, I've talked to you about that before the rejection of the firstborn the first time you're born you're rejected of God that birth is no good that birth is only going to get you in hell and dead that's what it's going to do for you the second birth is the one where that's important now, in the Bible, we have in the Middle East right today, we have a great war and a great turmoil over there. We have two... Now, all of these people are descendants of Abraham. Are they not? Okay. What was Abraham's first son? Ishmael. All right. What was uh, Isaac's first son? Esau. Now, these are both firstborns, aren't they? Now, according to, uh, I can't, uh, trying to think of the word, the right of the firstborn, 
Jenny. Birthright? Yeah, but, well, the, the right of the firstborn, it's, I can't think of the, the term right. What is it? Succession. Uh, Jenny something or other. Jenny, uh, pr primor genitor, primer genitor, primer, primal genitor. Okay, primal genitor. The firstborn. According to the rights of the firstborns, what? Ishmael and Esau should have been the heirs. But God rejected them. Now, who are the heirs? Who are the heirs? Isaac and who else? And Jacob. And both of them were not firstborns. All right? Now we have people over there that say that they're Arabs, which they are, and they say we're sons of Abraham, which they are. And they have every right to say that their ancestors were firstborns. And so they have a right to the land. And then the Jews come along and they say, God gave it to us. But in his word it says God gave it to us. All right, God gave it to us. Who's right? Both of, them are, both of them are legal heirs, if primal and janitor. They're both legal heirs to the land. But who did God say it was? The Jews' land. But now let's go back. If a Jew wants to get saved today, what's he going to have to do? He's going to have to go to church <laughs> and not some synagogue. He's going to have to come to God. If he's ever going to study, if he's ever going to surrender his life to God, he's not going to do it in the synagogue. He's going to have to go to the church and surrender his will to God. But they say, we are God's people. That's our land over there. That looks good on paper. But they got to repent. And to get to that point, they got to go through the tribulation period. Brother Steve said here a few weeks ago, he said, when we pray for Israel, what are we praying for? The tribulation period to come. <laughs> the rapture. <laughs> oh, that's, so they can God can beat them up and bring them back to God. Okay? Right here, they demanded that Titus, which was a Gentile, be circumcised to be into the covenant of God. What is the covenant, the New Testament covenant of God? What is the covenant? What's the sign of the covenant in the New Testament? The Holy Spirit. Huh? The Holy Spirit. No. What's the sign of the covenant? What is the New Testament sign of the covenant? What? Who said that? Baptism, thank you, Brother Randall. Baptism, that's a sign of the covenant. Circumcision means nothing anymore. Nothing. It's healthier for man to be circumcised, but it means nothing spiritually. If, you, if it means anything spiritually, every time that a Jew is circumcised, according to the law on the eighth day and all this kind of stuff, that's blasphemy. If you want to, I'm going to get down to it, because you're rejecting God's new covenant. That's an act of a active hatred. Now, if they want to circumcise their boys, that's fine. But I'm going to tell you what, it's not grafting them into the promises of God. The Lord Jesus said you've got to be circumcised of heart. Paul the Apostle said you need to be circumcised of heart. So they're prejudiced here. They were wrangling with Titus. And they wrangled with Timothy too, didn't they? They wrangled and they wrangled and wrangled. They wrangled with Paul. But on the contrary, seeing that I had been entrusted with the gospel to the uncircumcised, just as Peter with the gospel to the circumcised, for he who effectually worked for Peter in his apostleship to the circumcision, circumcised effectually worked in me to the Gentiles, and recognized the grace that had been given to me, James and Cephas and John, who were reputed to be pillars, gave to me and Barnabas the right hand of fellowship that we might go to the Gentiles and they... they to the circumcised. They only ask us to remember the poor, the very thing that I also was eager to do. Now we had a Jerusalem conference too, didn't we? Over the very same things. The Jews kept wrangling with the Gentiles. They wanted to make everybody that was a Christian convert into a what? A Jew. What the Jews need to do is to learn to be Gentiles today. Because the God of heaven calls them a dog. Reprobates today. All right? Let's go on 8 and, eight and verse 3 now. A day tis agapa. A day tis agapa. Tone 
Theon, Hutos, Agnoste, Heap, Altu. All right. The cross references to this are 2 Timothy 2.19, Exodus 33.12, Galatians 4 and 9, 1 John 4.19. And uh, for First John four and eight. First, third class conditional. Now some writers will disagree with me, but what rules the condition? Remember what it is. Look over here. Look, look, look at A there, and then look over to the fourth word, and look down there, and tell me what it is. Anybody read to me? Third person singular present. What? Subjunctive. The subjunctive mode tells us that's a third class conditional part, un undetermined but with definite possibility of termination. But if anyone, he may love. What makes you love God? You've signed the covenant of God two times, don't you? The new covenant. You sign it two times. The first time you sign it, you sign it from your heart. That's when you're born again. That's when the Spirit of God comes into you and seals you unto the day of redemption. The second time you sign the covenant is when you surrender to scriptural baptism and you're baptized. That's the second time. That's the church. That's the serving the Lord in one of his churches. Okay. Subjunctive mode. We may or we may not love God. When you're born again, you love God. You don't love God until you're acquainted with God personally. When the Lord God comes into your heart, then you learn to love. You learn to love. There's a word philanthropy. What does, that, what does philanthropy mean? Huh? That's the word philo. It comes from philo. That's another Greek word that I didn't give you a while ago. Philos. Philos. Of giving you that one down there. Philos or philo. Or philanthropy comes from that. That means to like somebody so much that you help them. There was a guy by the name of uh, Carnegie. How many of you have ever been to a Carnegie library? They were all over the country, you know, Carnegie. Carnegie was a ungodly buzzard. He had ripped off people all of his life. He was a, a, a greedy, greedy man. And he made millions and millions of dollars, millions and millions. And he had walked on people all of his life to get that money. And finally, he went to church, and he got under the conviction of the Holy Spirit of God, and he asked the preacher, he said, I have done so much wrong. I have put widows out on the street. I have not given money to people that I should have given to them and their wages and things, and I feel really bad about it. He said, what in the world can I make up with society for being such a rat? He said, why don't you build libraries so those poor people could come and read books? By the way, there are certain things that, uh, that are indicatives of a civilized country. One of the things is having roads, a postal service that works, and what else? A library. That's, that's what we call civilized. That's how you judge a nation, is by their postal service, by their roads, and by their libraries. That was the whole, in history, that's it. Well, he decided he'd build all kinds of libraries and put books out there so every man could get an education. And he gave scholarships also to people to try to make up for what a rat he was. That's what you call philanthropy. Uh, how about... Uh, Philandras, Flanders, Flanders. What is a philander? A philander. No. That, that's philandering. That's a different one. The word philander, philander means to love your husband. Philo Andre, one who loves her husband. All right. Philadelphia means what? Brotherly love. See, all of that. I forgot to give that to you a while ago. I skipped over that. Now you got it. 
But if anyone he may love the God, this one, he has been known by him. How do you get to the, how do you get to know God? By praying to him and asking him to save your soul. And then when he saves your soul, then you learn about what love is, what love is like, what love is like. Penny, you got your Bible open up there? You want to come up here and read number three for me, please? Number three. <clears throat> but if one loves God truly with affectionate reverence, prompt obedience, and grateful recognition of his blessing, he is known by God, recognized as worthy of his intimacy and love, and he is owned by him. All right. When we love God, we own God, and God owns us. When we love God, God loves us, and we love him. It changes a lot of things, doesn't it? It changes. It changes who you are. It changes who you are. You could go look in 1 Timothy 2.19, Exodus 33.12, and Galatians 4.9, 1 John 4.19, and 1 John 4 and 8, and it talks about that. If you love God, your life shows love and sacrifice. All right? 8 and verse 4. 8 and verse 4. Peri, teis, brosios, un, ton, idola, theton. Oidamen, hote, udan, edolon, en, cosmu, kai, hote, udes, theos, a, me, ace. Concerning the eating, all right, concerning the eating. Concerning the eating. They used to have an old thing they called bromo seltzer for a stomach ache a long time ago. Uh, something you got from eating the wrong kind of food. This here, the word is eating. Concerning eating, therefore, the idol sacrifices. Paul the Apostle now, he's going to address this. Sometimes it's the only thing that gets the work done. That's why I keep fooling with the thing because I need a backup sometimes. <laughs> sometimes the other ones don't work. Randall, many times we've had to have a backup, haven't we? All right. Concerning the eating, therefore, of idle sacrifices, we have known, we have known, first person plural, perfect indicative active, we have known, that nothing, an idol in the world. Nothing an idol in the world. And because, or but because, you can put that word chi there, you can put but down there if you want to. But because no one God except literally what it says, if not one. Because there is no God except one. There is no God except one. I don't care whether people worship Joseph Smith or his writings or Buddha or Charles Taze Russell if they, they, they bet their whole eternal soul on his writings and the interpretation of Scripture. It doesn't matter if somebody, uh, the world today, you can use Jesus' name in vain all you want, can't you? And nobody's going to kill you. But if you use Mohammed's name in vain, you're liable to get killed. Bad. Murdered. There's a little 14-year-old girl over there, you know, you heard about this, she was shot because she wanted to go to school. And Mohammed, you know, they, they didn't believe in educating women, so they're, they're a lesser citizen over in those, in those countries. So they don't deserve the right to be educated. And they killed her, tried to. And they threatened to go ahead and finish the job if they can get back to her now. 
intolerant to any religion. Intolerant. You know who else is going to be intolerant in the last days? The Antichrist. The Antichristos. He will be intolerant. There will be no religious intolerance. No religious tolerance, that is, in the last day. No religious tolerance. Now, we know that there is no God except one. The only one God. Rebecca, you want to come up here and read this uh, 8 and verse 4 for me, please? <clears throat> 8 and verse 4. In this matter, then, of eating food offered to idols, we know that an idol is nothing, has no real existence, and that there is no God but one. All right, there's only one God. There aren't a bunch of idols. The idols don't exist, do they? They don't mean anything. Nothing. Idols don't mean anything. Idols, I don't care how, many, how much trust people put in an idol, it is not a god. Mary is not a god. The Virgin Mary is not a god. You can pray to Virgin Mary all you want, and your prayers won't get any further than, than you and that idol of her. No good. Because she has no power. God used her to bring forth the Messiah into the world, and that is all. That's it. He could have used any woman, any woman, but he chose to use her. Brought her into the world. And she had other kids too. I don't care what the Catholic Church said. She had a bunch of kids. She was married to Joseph. And she had children after him. So no matter what you pray to. No matter what people pray to. Buddha or whatever. Those things don't exist. They don't exist. Well next week. Well we're going to talk about so called gods next week. So called gods. Eight and, eight and five. Today's my oldest boy's birthday. Eight and five is where we'll go next week. Thank you for being here tonight. And continue to pray for me, please. I appreciate that. And uh, Brother Dick, would you mind coming up here and dismissing us in prayer, brother? <coughs> Father, thank you for this time that we could gather to look into your word and learn the deeper meanings of some of these words and uh, for some of the things that are revealed to us through Brother Jim. We just thank you for his teaching and his gifting, and we pray that you'll go with us now to our homes, give us safety, and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you all for your attention and adjourn to those hard old seats.